The human body is continually responding to stresses to maintain homeostasis. Before we look at the specifics of how cortisol responds to stress to maintain homeostasis, let's first refresh our understanding of the fundamentals of a homeostatic system. The tendency to maintain a stable internal environment when exposed to a varied environment is called homeostasis. The homeostatic mechanism is made up of three fundamental parts, the receptor, the control center, and the effector. The receptor receives a stimulus, which then relays this information onto the control center to make sense of it. The control center will then send a signal to the effector to produce a response which usually opposes the original stimulus. Now we are ready for cortisol and stress. Almost all types of stress will result in an increased release of cortisol, whether the stress is physical or neurogenic. For today, the example will be trauma, specifically resulting in a laceration of tissue. This physical stressor, which is the stimuli, will be picked up by the receptor in different parts of the brain, such as the limbic system or the brainstem. Here we will relay a signal to the hypothalamus, which is the control center, specifically the paraventricular nucleus. This nucleus releases corticotrophin releasing hormone, which then goes down to the anterior pituitary gland, which releases another hormone known as adrenocorticotrophin hormone or ACTH, which then goes in the systemic blood to go to the effector, the adrenal cortex, to release cortisol. Once cortisol enters the bloodstream, it will do many things to mitigate the original stressor. Let's go through a few of the most important effects. Cortisol will sensitize arterioles and myocardium to adrenaline, therefore increasing heart rate and blood pressure to deliver more blood centrally in the body. Cortisol will increase the amount of free amino acids in the blood by diverting away from muscle and rather into the liver. Here the liver will convert the amino acids into glucose and release to increase glucose levels. This is known as gluconeogenesis. Cortisol will increase free fatty acids by mobilizing fat from adipocytes, increasing the free fatty acids in the blood. Most go into the liver to again be made back into glucose, increasing glucose levels. Cortisol will block the insulin effect, therefore stopping glucose being used in muscles and fat, rather preferentially being used in the brain to improve the cognitive capacities of the brain. Cortisol will break down bone to release calcium. Calcium is very important for muscle contraction, nerve conduction, and also blood clotting. Cortisol will suppress immune function, specifically inflammation, and increase wound healing. This is thought to be the result of increasing building blocks within the blood, which improves tissue repair. All of these effects help to mitigate the original stressor and hopefully returning the body back to homeostasis.